Turn with me this morning. We are going to the word of God. We are going to the word of God this morning. Let's go to the book of Numbers. I'm not going to be long. Numbers chapter 14. Please help me with strings. Numbers 14. We're going to be reading it from verse 20. Please flow with me with strings, my brother. I like how you are playing. God bless you. Numbers chapter 14. I thought we were going to clap hands for him. I thought I had told you better than that in this two minutes. That you are standing here. What kind of people do we have, Minister Longi, in this baby today? Heavens for the servant of God. Come on, now. Oh, what? Okay, we are going to the book of Numbers. We are going to start reading from the book of Numbers chapter 14, verse 20. From the 14th chapter, that's what I meant to say. God is good in this place today. He is good in this place today. Why not choose anybody who 
often say blood is thicker than water. But I beg to differ. The spirit is bigger, is thicker than blood. What matters is not blood. What matters is the spirit. What matters is not your family background. But what matters is the kind of a spirit that you have. What matters is not your educational background. What matters in the kingdom of God is what Nobody can shut and repent because it is not easy as that. They have. 
instrument in a place called Kadesh Benia. In other words, Kadesh means height or a high place. Benia means holiness. Now you may be asking yourself, Prophetess, what are you saying to us this morning? I am saying to you, you can never be holy and remain low. When you are holy, you are Fine. 
violent and the violent are taking it by force. So us being able to cast out demons temporarily is not going to help us. Although it is necessary, we have to do it. Us being able to perform miracles, although we have to, and we know we will perform the miracles, but that's not what matters. We want to be able to sustain. So what we cannot sustain will eventually go away. We did not see you performing one miracle because we saw you doing it over and over again. How do you know something is grace when it repeats itself? That is the pattern of grace. God is not a God who will bless you today and curse you tomorrow. That's not the kind of God that he is. For the Bible says, Paul says, you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But now the disciples are coming to say to him, Master, teach us how to pray. And I'm asking myself, why are they asking for that? But it also shows us that for three years, Jesus was not only performing these miracles, there was a source of the miracles, there was a source of power. He did not go to consult, he did not go and pray some person in some small room, he did not take off his shoes. Jesus had a pattern, and the pattern was prayer. And the disciples saw the pattern, and they said, We want to be like you, therefore, we've got to follow your pattern. Shouting out, prophetess is walking on water, clap at somebody. Listen, nothing wrong with that. We are celebrating what God is doing. But I am saying to you, when you go to God, ask for what is necessary, ask for what will sustain your breakthrough. Don't just ask for the fruit, ask for the root. Say, God, don't give me fruit, keep me rooted in you. Because the Bible says, if you are fighting me and I am fighting you. If you come from the city place, you will have 
she went to the altar and she said, this one needs me and God in When you are in a place of prayer, you are in a place of advantage. You get to negotiate with God. That's a privilege nothing else can give you. How to say unto God, God, you give me a son. I'm looking for a son. You're looking for a prophet. You give me a son, I'm giving back to you. God, I'm in a point of prayer. In the atmosphere of Jesus, nothing is impossible. No sickness is incurable. No problem cannot be solved. No barren womb can be shut in a place of prayer. Yeah. You can cry and your womb remains shut. But when you begin to pray and say, God, my altar is calling for you. Send me a revival today. There is no way God will keep saying. What kind of a spirit do you have? Do you have a prayerful spirit? Or do you have a spirit that always complains, hoping things will change? Here's another woman. I'll give you two examples and the clues. When you pray, be persistent in your prayer. Don't just pray and expect God to show up today because you pray today. Prayer means persistence. Sometimes God does not change our situations because He wants the situations to change us. Do not stop praying. It may look like the mountain is not moving. When the children of Israel marched around the walls of Jericho, I'm sure on the first day they thought, I no, this is not working. Yeah. On the second day, nothing happened. On the third day, nothing happened. They are moving around and yet God told them the walls would collapse. God did not need four days to collapse the walls. Yeah. For one day, yes. even a thousand days is a one day unto yeah. God. But he was dealing with their faith to say, do you trust me enough that after walking when you shout, these walls are going to collapse. They could have collapsed the moment they took their first step. But God was not out to change the walls. He was out to change them, to deliver them from their stubbornness. Sometimes it's not about your situation, it's about you. Sometimes what God wants to change is not your, your relationship with your sisters or your mother.
if Jesus could stand and say, tell the master, I need that thing to travel with it. And it came to him. Don't you think he can give you a pants in one day? But the question is, why do you need a pants? God will not share his glory with anyone. Sometimes God does not answer your prayer because your motives are wrong. Because you are not ready for it. The Bible says, how can he trust you with much if you cannot be trusted with the little? Be faithful in the little that God gave you. There is a woman that I want to introduce you to. Just for your reference. Luke 18 verse 1 to 8. This woman was dealing with an unjust judge. But the Bible says she went every day knocking at his house. She got tempted away the first time. Sometimes in prayer it will look like God is taking you away. He does not hate you. He wants to see your persistence. Because some of us treat God like an ATM. Enter your pee, get what you want, go away. Some of us treat God like put my visa. God is the God of a relationship. He wants a relationship with you more than anything. The woman went back and she fought again. The master turned her away, but she made a decision. I'm going to keep going. Even if it looks like God is not answering my prayers. But I'm not going to give up praying. I'm going to keep pushing. Why am I saying this to you? I am telling you, woman of God, arise today. Don't just pray, but pray until something happens. As long as you don't see a result, it means that you still have to keep pushing. Because God is able. What is impossible with men is possible with God. But God is dealing with you. Number two, don't just pray persistently because sometimes you can go to the secret place Monday to Monday, God does not answer you. Sometimes you can fast, God does not move. Fasting and prayer are not a primary to get God to move. But it's a sign of submission. To say God is sovereign. God is sovereign. Sovereignty means my decisions are not influenced by anyone. So your prayer is not to influence God. Your prayer is to show God that you submit. And the minute you submit and you depend on Him alone, God is nothing that He will withhold from you. So prayer is not a prayer. You don't just come in and say, I'm going to pray today, get what I want and go back home and then leave God. Prayer does not pray God. But persistent prayer shows that you've got no other hope. Because God says, my glory I will share with nobody else. So apart or in addition to praying persistently, Who prays? Who dwells 
in the presence. You want them to ask silly questions like, is he my husband? Is he this? Is he that? Because prayer reveals your purpose. And purpose reveals who can and who cannot be in your life. Purpose is a scanner. The minute you come and greet me, my purpose tells me I'm not denied. It needs a woman of prayer. Who is going to say, God, why do 
changed them. Because why? We trash them on social media and then we feed their trash in our private spaces. We feed it. You know it's taken, but because we don't pray, principles are not constantly provoked to be on high. You still like his picture, you love his picture, you embrace his picture. Let's 